great to have you with us on a Saturday. Welcome to Derby City. Inside historic Freedom Hall, Bellarmine and Liberty for a chance to clinch the number one seed in the upcoming A-Sun Tournament. First ever meeting between these two. They've combined to win their last 18 straight. And a look at the A-Sun standings tell the story. Both locked at the top with identical 10 and 2 marks. Great to have you with us with Paul Biancardi, former Horizon League Coach of the Year. I am Roy Philpott. This has got a championship vibe to it on this Saturday afternoon, doesn't it, Paul? Yeah, the Knights are one of the feel-good stories of college basketball. Think about this. A year ago, a Division II power. Today, they play Liberty, the Goliath of the A-Sun for a title. The script could not be more exciting. Yeah, you may be asking yourself, who are the Bellarmine Knights? It is their first season playing Division I basketball, located right here in Louisville, Kentucky. Won a D2 national title just a decade ago. And 12 consecutive NCAA tournament appearances at that level. Open their season at Cameron Indoor against the Duke Blue Devils. A year ago, they opened their campaign against Northwoods in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. First season playing D1 hoops. Why not do it against one of the best programs in the history of the game? Underway between Liberty and Bellarmine. Starting five for the Flames. Darius McGee, he's 5'8". He's got a 48-inch vertical and certainly going to be... Bradshaw leads the charge for the Bellarmine Knights. Playing just their second game ever on national television. One of the feel-good stories in college hoops this season. Bradshaw goes to work and connects 3-2. to two. Bradshaw has such a versatile game. He affects the game in many ways. Scoring, rebounding. He also has incredible passing vision. Keep an eye on 32. Good lob inside by Blake Preston. It's Liberty a three-point lead again. Now the Flames, Paul, have won ten games in a row. Make that eight games in a row coming in. Bellarmine's won its last ten after starting 0-2 in the A Sun. And look inside, Nick Thielen, first bucket, 5-4. to four. Both teams perfect from the field to start. Bellarmine loves to move the ball. They're going to snap it around the key, hard cuts. They're trying to move that weak side help of the pack line defense by Richie McKay. Richie McKay, the former Virginia assistant, running the pack line. Quick trigger for McGee, swatted away by C.J. Fleming. Dylan Penn double team with the pack line. Bradshaw can't get the bounce. Missed the chippy, Flames control. Liberty won 30 games a year ago, Paul. They've won the A-Sun in each of their first two seasons in the conference. And they clinched the regular season title both years on the road. It's a very focused, battle-tested group. Preston triple teamed and was fouled. Richie McKay, eighth season, second stint with the Flames in Lynchburg, Virginia. We had so many great quotes in our conversations with him this week. When you look at the job that Richie McKay has done, the one stat that really jumps out, 78 wins last three years. Only one program with more wins. The Zags. It's pretty incredible. Contact, no whistle. Kyle Rowe connects 7-4 to four in Liberty. Richie McKay told us usually on the other side of hard is what you want. This season has been hard. And Scott Davenport, head coach of the Knights, echoing those sentiments in many respects. Good look inside again. How about the precision passing? Second bucket for Nick Thielen. When you throw it into the post against Liberty, you're going to get that double team, big on big. The Knights made a nice cut behind. Liberty didn't rotate. They got a layup. Elijah Cuffey. Great start for the Flames offensively. Three minutes in, they lead it by three. If you're a purist of the game, you have to love the passing and cutting 
between the Knights and the Flames right now. I mean, watching ball. Bellerman, it's like watching the sequel to Hoosiers, the way that they move the basketball. Yeah, the ball has energy right now for Bellerman. Deep three by Fleming, back iron. Road controls the rebound. I mean, can I sell you on that? There's a little element of Gene Hackman like directing traffic here. You could sell me on anything right now. <laughs> this game is, is so exciting. The city of Louisville, they love basketball. They are pumped for this game. They are Loader big by time Chris Parker. We're just excited that we're knocking on the front door of Champ Week. And this one's got an NCAA tournament feel to it. Dylan Penn inside his first butt basket. And Liberty's losing the cutters behind the behind the action. Bellerman does a great job of moving off ball. They don't have the ball. They don't stand. They're hard to guard. Every starter for the Flames has already scored in this one. Chris Parker goes back to work. Another floater this time off the mark. He'll get it back. Road off the mark. Bradshaw the rebound. And a scrum as both teams hit the deck. Flames will get it. Check out the offense by the Flames. Little pass and go for a layup. Bellerman attacks the double with a little layup. Playing for a regular season title this afternoon. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy, the official sponsor of Getting Stuff Done. Outside of historic Freedom Hall, Louisville, Kentucky, Bellerman University welcomes you. The Flames leading the Knights by three early on. Head coach for Bellerman, Scott Davenport, 16th season. He's hired back in 2005 and giving an earful to our veteran officiating crew led by John Dillon. This afternoon, you see his record, nearly 400 wins. And uh, the Knights will get it back. Five minutes in after the jump ball. Coach Davenport had some great stories for us on the call yesterday, but how about the 12 straight NCAA tournaments? I don't care what level of basketball you coach, when you make 12 straight NCAA tournaments, that means you have great support from the top and the bottom of your program. And to make the adjustment and transition from Division II to Division I, and to be playing for a title this afternoon, that speaks volumes of the university's support for basketball. Parker picked up his first personal. One more free throw coming for Ethan Clayco. Flames would get it back. Well, Bellarmine, one of four programs making the transition to D1 this season. Tarleton State, UC San Diego, and Dixie State, the other three. And making that transition, the Knights are not eligible for the big dance itself. Three-pointer, Kyle Rowe wide open, top of the key. Paul, that's a bit unfortunate when you consider the season they've had. They were picked last in the A-Sun preseason poll. Win today, you would clinch the number one seed in the upcoming A-Sun tournament in Jacksonville starting on Thursday. So obviously good enough to warrant consideration. Won't happen this season. Dylan Penn, it's all met for the mid-range. Penn is a big-time scoring guard for the Knights. Leads the team in assist with 65, but he's got a smooth pull-up game. Cuffey gets the bounce. Elijah Cuffey, the senior from West Virginia. He's played in 130 career games. Nicely executed off the bounce. I love the way Cuffey can score in the paint and behind the arc. Brings great versatility to Liberty. Tough matchup for opponents. Sam DeVall, first touch, back iron. I mean, how tough would that be, Paul? You're a former coach. You understand the nature of coaching, playing Division I basketball, to go from D2 to D1 in the course of a year and have this level of success. Not easy to do, virtually impossible. It's remarkable in many ways. Liberty, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. It's hard, Roy, when you go 
diff to different conferences within your level of play. So if you go from a low major to a mid-major, your recruiting changes, the budgets change, the expectations change. But Bellerman went to a different level of play from Division II to one, and to be this successful this early, it's absolutely amazing. Stick that, Alec Green, his first basket, a sophomore from Cincinnati. Played his high school ball at Archbishop Moeller High School. Played for a great coach, Carl Kramer. Over 600 wins at Moeller. Flames start today, 8 of 11, make it 9 of 12. Row from downtown again. Well, how much fun is this team to watch, especially offensively? So efficient, so precise, the Liberty Flames. And they work real hard to take good shots. They'll grind you now on the offensive end. Two teams that really have a similar style of basketball, but their schemes are different. The Knights want to play at a faster tempo. You see right now Liberty wants to walk it up on offense. They want to keep you on defense. Wait for you to make a mistake and get their open look. McGee left open. He'll dish it off. Keegan McDowell, the runner. And that's when Liberty's at its best. When you start helping and rotating, they have you beat. They just want that first guy to help Roy. Then they're going to whip the ball around and find that open man and knock it down. Nifty move by Dylan Penn. That'll trim the lead back down to eight. Fast start for Liberty. Flames won 30 games last year. 29 games in 2019, including an upset of Mississippi State in the big dance itself. First ever win in the tournament for Liberty. McGee, the step back from the wing. That's another triple. Five of six for bonus land start the Flames today. McGee's been on fire. Two, yeah, he's been on fire his last three games, though, Roy. 25 points per game for number two in the blue in the last three. Quick spin by Claycomb. Got to love the pace and the passing between these two clubs right now offensively. The defense is digging in, but the offense is one step ahead. Hey, Flames are shooting 79%. You're going to win a lot of games with that kind of number. They all got a shot fake game. Look at them. Parker wide open. That's a shot from downtown. Now five of six. The lead swells to 11. Well, that's a clinic on shot fake and move it. Heat check on for the Liberty Flames. How about these shots, coach? Liberty is on fire right now. The Flames with the shot fake. Two shot fakes. The extra pass, the three ball. Liberty Flames, big story so far. Five out of six from downtown. 80% from the floor overall. Paul, what do you like? I love the way they create the three. That's the key to the three-point shot. Anybody can take a three. You can always fall into a three-point shot. But Liberty works really hard at creating open looks. Shot fakes, dribble penetration. The ball goes into the paint. They spray it out. They make the extra pass and then the one more. And it's really hard to catch up to the basketball once that starts happening. Liberty could be one of those teams, you know, Selection Sunday, two weeks out. They were to go on and win the A-Sun tournament. A-Sun's going to be a one-bid league. Here's a steal by C.J. Fleming. But Liberty's a team has a kind of firepower to win a game or two. 29 to 20 after the steal and the finish by Bellerman. We're looking at the top two offensive teams in the A-Sun. Both at 72 points per game. Liberty has that defensive mindset, that pack line that keeps them in games even when they're not making shots. Great defense right there by the Knights, forcing it to the baseline. McGee stepped out of bounds. Alec Freen blocked him off from the path to the basket. Opportunity now for Bellerman. National television debut at Freedom Hall. Nationally, national television debut as a D1 program. 
playing here at home. Great job refurbishing Freedom Hall. Remember the former home of Louisville? Bradshaw goes to work. Twisted up there for a moment. And a jump ball this time. Arrow favors the Flames. Paul, you coached in this arena back in the day, did you not? 0 for 2. <laughs> uh, Freedom Hall has such an intimidating atmosphere when it's sold out. And you can hear the acoustics just with the crowd that's there today. Louisville, the city of Louisville is so passionate about their basketball. When I think of Freedom Hall, I think of St. John Arena, Ohio State's old facility, Assembly Hall, Indiana, Cameron Indoor, Fog Allen, one of the great venues for college basketball. That miss, first one in eight attempts for the Flames. Roy Bellerman does a fabulous job with ball reversal. Count the passes around the key. They get six to seven passes before they shoot it. Nash Whelan, first bucket. Well, they gave us the numbers yesterday on that. With no ball reversals in an offensive possession, Bellerman shoots about 39%. With two or more, that number goes up to 62%. And they really emphasize ball reversal and the pack line defense for Liberty. They allow you to reverse the ball. They just don't allow the ball inside the three-point line. That's Jackson the goal of the mark. pack line. How many pages of notes did Scott Davenport tell us he had talking with, or rather Richie McKay told us that he had talking with Tony Bennett, legendary Dick Bennett, Bo Ryan. I want to say 90-plus pages of notes on the pack line. Two teams red hot from the floor. Combined to shoot 67% timeout. Freedom Hall, where the name means so much. Of course, the first pro boxing fight of Ben Cassius Clay back in 1960. Facility opened just four years previous. Host of six Final Fours. And of course, the national champions. 1980, also 86, the great Denny Crum. Freedom Hall, Louisville basketball last played here in 2010. Upset top-ranked Syracuse in the final home game before just about 21,000 fans. It's now been refurbished, repurposed, multi-purpose event venue. And now the home court for the Bellerman Knights in their first season playing D1 hoops. The court looks fabulous. Most 3,000 fans in attendance today. Sell out by COVID-19 standards. Off the turnover, here come the Flames. Defending A-Sun champs. Drake Dobbs checks in for the first time for Liberty. Numeral zero. Really threw it away. The Knights, they get after it defensively. Love the hustle. They you ever take 92 turnovers. pages of notes, coach, on the, uh, oh, on the Only when line? you're talking. Only when you're talking, Roy, do I take notes. Fleming uh, coast to coast. I know that's not true. I hope not. You think about the knowledge of, of Dick Bennett and Tony Bennett. 92 pages is not enough. Yeah, Richie McKay said, if I don't know it by now, something's wrong. Over and back, they'll turn it over, preventing the breakaway for Betts. Bellamy gets it back, and now the Knights on a bit of a run. When you watch Liberty play, they're really a clone of UVA. UVA doesn't turn it over much, neither does Liberty. They're a low turnover team. But the Knights are getting out, denying a little bit more right now. Trying to make the catch a little bit further away for Liberty. And if the defense is going to extend, then you have to back cut so they don't get steals. Watch the ball reversal. This is impressive. Five to shoot. Play home, a step back. Silky smooth with a mid range. One possession game. Eight nothing run for the Knights. Claycomb had 15 against North Alabama 
on February 13th. He's efficient. Approaching six to play in the first half. Good look inside, Shiloh Robinson. Look how quickly Liberty gets back and how quickly Bellman pushes the ball up the floor. They want to score quick if they can. Best way to beat the pack, beat it down the floor. It's almost like you're sending a note to the rest of the ACC, whoever may be watching today working against Virginia State. Bill and Penn wanted three the hard way, instead he'll go to the line to shoot two. A full day of college basketball across all of our networks, highlighted by these two matchups over on ESPN. Two Eastern, number five, Illinois, 23rd ranked Wisconsin for Madison. Into the ACC we go, 11th ranked Florida State leads the conference and takes on Bubblicious UNC. That is at 4 Eastern. The Tar Heels 14 and 8. Joe Lenardi's got him on the right side of the bubble right now. Paul, you buying that? Yes, no question about it. I see him as a 10 seed. I see them in the tournament. They would have to fall apart, North Carolina, to not make it. Their backcourt is getting better. They have a huge challenge against Florida State. What a battle between the front courts in that game. And McGee traveled. Knights would get it back. What about Duke? Blue Devils right now also back on the bubble. Great help position by the Knights. Watch, watch his teammates. They race over. That's a team that's connected. They care about each other. And that's coaching. Sometimes the guys on the floor, you look at them, you walk the other way, you're thinking about yourself. Both of these teams are, are just so connected to each other on an emotional level. Ben was tapped on the arm. He'll shoot two more. I noticed you looked at me when you said you were thinking about yourself. I, I hope you weren't sending a shot right there. Uh, I'm hoping you'll pick me up when I'm down, Roy. <laughs> of course, that's what I'm here that, to do. That was the message. 68% shooter for Dylan Penn this season. He's one of three at the line to start. Winner of this game will clinch the number one seed in the upcoming A-Sun tournament. Liberty's trying to do that the third straight time. Elijah Cuffey just picked up his second personal, 14 foul. Pins missed a couple of free throws here. Otherwise, a different feel to it early on. Approaching five to go in our first half. And saves it. Here's Fleming with a quick trigger. Boy, they convert quickly, the Knights. As soon as they go from defense to offense, it's quick. They don't look back. They don't pull it out. They don't reset. They play off of each other so well. McGee was fouled in a chance for four. How about that shot from the corner? C.J. Fleming hammered him on the release. And Darius McGee's going to have a chance for a game changer. Number two in the blue, one of the most exciting players in the A-Sun. He owns in the gym range. That is deep right corner. And he has been on fire. Last three games, over 50% behind the arc. Nine points in our first half for Darius McGee. He averages 15 per game. Richie McKay told us this week, everybody loves him. He'll have a 20-minute conversation with the custodian, with the star of the team, with Mike Krzyzewski. Doesn't matter inside. There's a good look for Alec Green, 35-29. But Darius McGee, one of the feel-good stories out of the A-Sun this year. Small in stature, big in heart, and in production, Coach. He certainly is. He can score with the ball in his hands. He's very elusive, creative. Liberty does a nice job finding him when he's open. Chris Parker, also productive from downtown. Flames come out of the gate on fire today, making 15 of their first 20 shots. 
No mathematician, that's about 75%, Coach. Oh, great hustle. Great hustle. Timeout on the floor. And we remind you, ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try the new jalapeno popper chicken sandwich and salad today at participating U.S. Wendy's. Darius McGee, one of the top players in the A Sun, unlimited range connecting from near midcourt pregame. And we mentioned his incredible athleticism. Give me the shimmy. There it was Darius McGee. A 48 inch vertical. The slow mo cam tells the story. He could pick a dime off the top of the backboard, Paul B. and Cardi, if you wanted to. Now that's Zion Williamson like. Look at that. The hang time, the reach. Incredible vertical. When he Looking drives down, down the, the lane, rim right there. Yeah. Yeah, when he drives down the lane with that type of vertical, he can get called for three seconds. He's in the air so long. <laughs> Flames on fire from downtown, not that time. Lead is nine. First place. The number one seed in the A Sun tournament on the line this afternoon. Bradshaw was fouled. And the Knights back to the strike. Darius McGee. Kind of an old soul. He loves old cars. Always smiling, always in a great mood, and he's attempted nearly 200 shots from bonus land this season, Paul. That's a volume shooter, but productive. Yeah, he's an old soul with, with a new school game. We saw the 48-inch running vertical. He's got a 38-inch standing vertical. Knockdown three-point shooter. He's got a great hesitation game. Step back threes. He knows how to create space at 5'9" to get a shot off. And that's what makes him special. I mean, a 5'9 may be a little generous too, but. Just reading the notes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not a selfish star. He's really an unselfish star. That's what makes him an old soul. I scored 3,000 points in high school from fill it up when called upon. So can this guy, Chris Parker. Parker's got shake to his game. He's got 10 first half points after that last basket. Coach, it's not like Bellman's not playing well, but Liberty's been playing a little bit better, especially with their shots from three-point range. Liberty is top 30 in the country in three-point field goal percentage, almost 38%. They average 10 threes per game. That's top 20 in the country. Right now they have seven. And the weakness of Bellamin is the three-point field goal percentage defense, Roy. They're, they're 307 guarding the three-point shot. You know, what a Saturday of college basketball we have headed your way over on ESPN. Also on the app, speaking of Louisville, cards on the road tonight at Cameron Indoor. And that's at 6 o'clock Eastern over on ESPN. Then it's off to the Big 12, number two Baylor, 17th ranked KU. Live from Allen Fieldhouse, 8 Eastern, ESPN also on the ESPN app. I brought up Duke just for a moment earlier. And I didn't get a response from Paul Biancardi, but uh, wrong side of the bubble now. You buying Duke as a tourney team, perhaps with a late run? Not yet. It has to be a strong late run. Duke is still far behind in terms of NCAA at large berth. But playing in the ACC, you have that opportunity to make up ground quickly. That, that's the difference between the high major, power fives, and the rest. For conferences right like now. the a yeah, the A Sun, you, you're going to get one bit. Devils, one of the first four teams out, according to ESPN bracketologist Joe Lenardi. Every time I turn on my television, I see Joe Lenardi. I, I see a book, I see the bobblehead, I see Joe. I'm on Twitter, I see him. Flames are going to force another turnover here. I spoke to Joe Lenardi the other day. He said, between now and Selection Sunday, it's hard to breathe. He doesn't get time to breathe. <laughs> but he told me as well, Duke's chances, you know, they have to put on a run to get in. 
It's not an automatic, but they are playing exceptionally well right now. They're playing together, and they really are. You hear a young team, but without the preseason and all the uh, early season practices. Oh. A chance for four again for Darius McGee. How about that? This guy leads the A Sun and threes made. You can see why. In the gym range. He steps in the gym, he's in range. And that was contested. He's got Liberty great has... elevation, too, on that jumper. Oh, he does. It's beautiful. Flames have 45 first half points. And just two of those coming from the stripe, both courtesy of Darius McGee. An exceptional shooter, 40% on the season from three, 85 from the line. You know he's going to jack it. You just can't catch him. 13 first half points for Darius McGee. Lead at 14. Flames will get it back. Under two to play in our first half. He's been one of these stories. The number one seed on the line for the upcoming A-Sun tournament. Parker, right side of the paint, banks it in. Yeah, no resistance by Bellerman. In that time, two dribbles, nobody touched him. Major breakdown. Bradshaw, the response on the other end. That's a big bucket, lead back to 13. And a timeout going to be called by Scott Davenport. Timeout on the floor, we're back in 30. Back inside Freedom Hall, Darius McGee, 13 first half points, two four-point plays. And his buddy in the backcourt, Chris Parker, also with 12, coach. Well, that was a little boomerang action, they call it. Parker recognized, he had a big guy on him, Roy. Gave up the ball, got it right back. That's the boomerang effect. Then he takes the big off a live dribble. It's a concept against teams that love to switch. I'm not sure what boomerang, uh, boomerang effect is, but it, it feels like we're getting closer to champ week and the dance whenever you start putting that out there. Oh, the nice. Yeah, Knights are not tight on their defensive switches, coverages right now. Another turnover, a traveling violation. Alec Freem. Gives it up. 15-point lead, 45 seconds remaining in our first half. And Scott Davenport always so positive. His team not playing poorly. And Liberty has just been on fire from the floor. It's the fourth time this season they've gone for 50 or more and a half. And the Knights play good defense. They force turnovers, not by pressing, but by being aggressive on the ball, denying passing lanes. They play a little pack line defense sometimes as well. Tapped out, tracked down by McDowell. Six second differential between the clocks. And a timeout called by Richie McKay. Eight seconds to shoot. Liberty 20 minutes away, perhaps, from winning another ASUN regular season championship. Bellerman. Playing its first year of D1 basketball. Two teams have combined to win their last 18 games. If you're Richie McKay on this potential final possession, Paul, what are you looking for here? I'm running screening action for Darius McGee coming off a screen. I am not setting a ball screen because I don't want to bring another defender to the ball with eight seconds to go. Usually when there's less than 10 seconds on a shot clock, teams like to blitz a ball screen. Blitzing means that two guys trapped the ball handle are coming off. With eight seconds to go, there'll be no way to throw it. So, so far, Roy, you got blitz and you got boomerang. You gotta take some notes here. <laughs> 92 pages of notes at some point in time, learning from you. Hey, 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 hey. McGee's not Darius out there, so. Yeah, on the bench. Robinson bottled up, baseline, throws one up there. He'll track it down. 
Three seconds remaining. Robinson, a wide open path and a flush. A microcosm of a first half dominated by Liberty. The Flames shooting 72% overall, 67% from three. A big breakdown by the Knights. Liberty takes advantage. Robinson with the wherewithal. A few seconds to go in the half. Puts an exclamation point on it. Darius McGee with 13. Chris Parker in double figures as well as Kyle Rowe to lead the charge. For the Liberty Flames from Lynchburg, Virginia. Halfway home for a regular season championship. Coming up next, our halftime report with Nabil Kareem. He'll join us next right after this break. Welcome to Saturday Showcase, presented by Five Hour Energy, part of ESPN's Road to Champ Week, presented by Wendy's. 20 minutes in the books. Winner of this game will clinch the number one seed in the A-Sun tournament coming up Thursday in Jacksonville and Liberty with a 17-point advantage. With Paul Biancardi, I am Roy Philpott. Check this out, Coach. Bellman shoots 61% in the first half, yet they trail by 17. How does that work? Because Liberty shot 66% from three. They've made eight threes in the first half. They averaged 10. Liberty does a great job of creating the three-point shot with ball movement, shot fakes, and the extra pass. And yes, Richie McKay recruited a lot of great shooters. This team looks for each other. They have the green light to put it up. And they are on fire in the first half. Bellamy trailed against Stetson by 20 just a few weeks ago. Came back for the win, and there's a good start in our second half. The three for Clay Cup. Bellamy offensively has what it takes to get back into the game. They're fourth in the country right now in field goal percentage at 51%. It's their defense. Their three point field goal percentage defense last in the A Sun. Liberty first in the A Sun in three point field goal percentage. So the analytics are holding true. Cuffey off the mark and on the offensive rebound. Kyle Road was fouled. As Thielen picks up the personal. I mean, this is what basketball is all about. This is why we love the sport to see this kind of scoring and this kind of efficiency. No offense to all the defensive and rebounding lovers out there. This is fun hoops to watch when you look at Liberty's numbers so far. It's good defense by Liberty. At times, the Knights play pretty good defense. They've had some breakdowns, but the offense has really been beautiful by each team. Dylan Penn, the runner, off glass, and just like that, the lead trimmed to 12. It's all about stops for the Knights. The ability to get out on the three-point shot, yet don't give up the drive. Darius McGee had two four-point plays in the first half and a three to open up the second. A scouting report defense on Darius McGee. When you think you're close enough, get closer. Because <laughs> you're not that close. Well, I mean, you saw the 48-inch uh, vertical. We had film of that in the first half. Richie McKay told us he's got range back to about 48 feet at times. And that's been on display this afternoon. Bradshaw's been held in check. Mid-range is there. 45-42. I really like the way Pedro Bradshaw plays. He affects the game in different ways. Versatility, scoring, rebounding. He's a terrific passer as well. He started at Belmont, went to Eastern Kentucky, then ended up playing for Scott Davenport. I mean, he couldn't see the court at Eastern Kentucky. Off the skip pass, Parker, wide open, and it's all net. And go ahead and mark it down now. Liberty were to win the A-Sun tournament. They're a team that has done some bracket busting in the past, including that win against Mississippi State two years ago. Perhaps could have done it last year as A-Sun champions. We'll never know. Of course, the tournament was canceled. The way they shoot, the way they defend with a pack line. Awfully impressive. And they haven't skipped a beat, Liberty. And they lost the ASEN Player of the Year last year in Caleb Holmesley. Beautiful dish inside to Blake Preston. 
And Richie McKaylaw, 70% of his production from last year's team. He thought it would be a rebuilding year. He called it a bridge year to us. That's not been that. Bradshaw wide open with a pass. Perfect start for Bellerman. Five for five to begin our second half. Trailed by 17 at the break. It's now at 14. You're going to have to beat Liberty because they don't beat themselves. Very disciplined team on the defensive end and offensively. The field goal percentage right now is, is almost laughable. 73% for Liberty. Bellerman shooting 67%, trailing by 14. That's outrageous. Yes, yes. Tapped out. Parker lost it. It'll stay on this end. Just three to shoot. Three seconds to go. You want to look at a catch and shoot behind the arc. Tough spot to put it in bounds on the side. You're not going to get a lob at the rim, but you can get a quick catch and shoot. Get in off the carom. Two on the he, shot clock. He tried to throw it off the defender's back. Now there's two seconds. Now you can do, you can throw a lob because you got a better angle. Cal Road will trigger. Throw it up to Preston, Virginia. Open look, wide open for Cuffy. Why not? 11th three-pointer of the game for the Flames. They're 11 of 16 from downtown. Cuffy got open on the curl action. Somebody forgot to go with him. He just popped out. Wide open. Four players for the Flames now in double figures. C.J. Fleming elbow J. It rattles in and out. That's what Liberty wants. They want you to take that contested two-point shot. They're not going to let you get into the paint because as soon as you put the ball on the deck, there's bodies, there's hips. There's thighs, there's feet to help that drive. Here's Parker probing. A little up and under. Can't get the bounce, the rebound of Thielen. It was awkward when you see a missed shot in this game. Bradshaw agrees. Chance for three. Liberty still hot from the outside. McGee with that beautiful step back. Signature move. And how about baseline out of bounds? Elijah Cuffey, wide open. Why not? ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try the new jalapeno popper chicken sandwich and salad today and participate in U.S. Wendy's. High-level hoops back inside Freedom Hall. Liberty shooting a blistering 69% from the floor. Leading Bellamy. 63-48. Bradshaw three the hard way. Paul Bean Cardi, Roy Philpott, winner of this game, clinches the number one seed in the upcoming A-Sun tournament. Liberty's won it in the last two years, trying to make it three in a row. Bellerman playing its first season of D1 basketball, not eligible for the big dance this year, but will participate in Jacksonville later this week. The A-Sun tournament. All right, Paul, so Liberty, the big story, their shooting percentage. You mentioned during the break, they're not even playing that great defensively, just shooting lights out. When you look at the numbers, Bellerman shooting over 60% from the field, and they're shooting 50% from three. And they only have five turnovers. So it's not their offense, it's their lack of defense behind the arc. Ben comes up short, rebound grabbed by Cuffey. It's almost our favorite time of year, Champ Week. It's almost arrived on the ESPN networks. Two weeks out from Selection Sunday. So much to be decided in such a strange year of college hoops. Rare miss from behind the arc, that was Kyle Rowe. Bellerman switching a lot of those small big screens. 
Liberty likes to run that boomerang action back and forth, try to get a quick drive and a basket. I forgot if it was the boomerang or the blitz. Bradshaw couldn't get the bounce. Cuffey grabs another strong board. The blitz is on defense. Just think football blitz. Okay. The boomerang is on offense. We'll get you there. Appreciate that. It's the former Horizon League Coach of the Year. My favorite former Horizon League Coach of the Year, for those wondering, Paul McCarty. McGee wide open. How does that happen? He's going to make you pay. Darius McGee getting it done. Just a gorgeous possession by Liberty. The ball started on the left side. Dribble handoff action. Extra pass. And McGee with 19 points, including two four-point plays. Go back to the basket. Big man move for Justin Betts. The rebound pops out the road. The way Liberty is playing offensively, it, it puts pressure on your defense to make stops, but it also puts more pressure I believe on your offense because you have to try to keep pace with a team that is shooting lights out. And if you're not getting stops, sometimes that can affect your offense. And nobody's getting stops in this one. Jump ball. Arrow favors the Flames. This is a clinic in ball movement for Liberty. Dribble handoff. Penetration and kick. One more. Wide open. The idea of bringing it to the left, bringing it back to the right with different offensive concepts breaks down the defense. Robinson's got a hurry, nearly lost it, comes up short. And Clay Cole tapped that one straight out of bounds. Liberty gets a break. Clay Cole did a nice job with his body, but then he's got to secure that with two hands. You gotta catch the ball with your eyes. You gotta squeeze it with your hands. They should be going in offensive transition instead of playing defense right now. There's a switch. Parker against Fleming. And a turnover off the pass. Bradshaw comes away with it. Eight minutes into our second half, Flames in control. Fleming tried to will that one in, couldn't get the roll. Bradshaw flings a rebound up and in. Pedro Bradshaw started his career at EKU. Paul told you the story. Leading scorer, and he's got to have more of that. Now with 17 points, coach. You love the tenacity by Pedro Bradshaw. Trying to spark his team up right now. is about as good as it gets. I know it's supposed to be March 3rd. This game certainly has a Champ Week vibe to it. Winner clinches the number one seed in the upcoming A-Sun Tournament. Back inside a store at Freedom Hall. Paul Biancardi, Roy Philpott, Liberty Flames. Won 59 games in their last two seasons before this one. In command, thanks in large part to incredible shooting, including 12 of 18 from downtown coach. It's been a variety of guys. Darius McGee, Elijah Cuffey. Different guys making threes at different times. And the Knights, Scott Davenport, they don't have an answer defensively to guard the three. When they get too close, Liberty beats them off the bounce. When they don't get close enough, the three-point shot goes in the basket for Liberty. They're a hard team to play against because the spacing is so good. They have great shooters. Now it's been Howland in the NCAA tournament two years ago. Wow. McGee doing what McGee does. Give him 22. He's missed one shot in this game so far. On fire. He's got the ultimate green light. You can see why. 
Dylan Penn, productive outing as well. When you play against Liberty in the three-point line, you have to be urgent with your closeouts. That means you have to get there before the ball arrives. You've got to take away their airspace. McGee hears you loud and clear and takes advantage again. This guy was built for March. Darius McGee with 25. McGee loves to create that space. The step back three is his signature move. Bradshaw on the other end can't respond. McGee the rebound. He's skied for that one. And now Liberty will play with their slow tempo. Look to score, but if it's not there, not rush, not panic. Unless you feel it. Little heat check right there. But why not? Parker's been feeling it. Fourth straight game. Darius McGee has gone over 20 points. Clay Comb on the spin, short, late whistle. Darius McGee, one miss all day, coach. Catches it with his feet set, his eyes, hands are ready. Boy, he has deep range and a quick trigger. This time, behind the back, the step back. Defense wants to crowd him. <laughs> Offensively, he wants that space. Space and time are a shooter's best friend. Darius McGee is how to create both. Yes, he does, but the, the, the reaction of the bench there with that last three, it's like, are, are you kidding me right now? He, he couldn't be in a bigger zone at a more important time. And Rich McKay told us yesterday, you know, he's kind of an old soul. He loves old cars. He'd rather have a 69 Thunderbird than his current 2002 Mustang, whatever it was. And so we asked Liberty, hey, can you send us maybe a couple of pictures? And Darius like, nah, he's a low-key guy. Low maintenance. Heat check again, this time a rare miss for McKay. I wonder if he wears old school sneakers. I, I don't see Converse on him. <laughs> and a foul as Penn was penetrating on McDowell. Let's take a look at the shoes. That's some nice Nikes there. Right? Yeah, the classic. Classic Nikes. The fat stripe. Dylan Penn, 13 points, nearly lost it. Give him 15. He's been a smooth operator in that high rent district downstairs. He gets good position. And now Bellman putting the pressure on a little bit more, picking up in the backcourt. Important. That eats into the shot clock. And now they have to stay disciplined and engaged defensively. Pan will try to do that against McGee. Does not matter. He just floats into the lane. He's got speed, but he's got a great change of speed. Back to Liberty off the turnover. He gets you off balance. Watch the hesitation. Stop and go. Gets it high off the glass. And that's Speaking against six, seven, six, eight. You watched him in that video earlier, for the 48 inch vertical. Yeah, that's right, it's hit 48 inches. It's like somebody dropped him out of the rafters. He just took off there on the left side of the paint. And it's at his discretion when he wants to come down. It's the vertical and the body control. Nice pass. Robinson, another bucket down low. Largest lead for Liberty now at 20. Cream on the other end. Scott Davenport telling his guys to attack the rim off the bounce. They've been scoring more pain points in the second half. That's a turnover. Powell Road bounced it straight out of bounds right behind him. And that turnover came because the Knights extended their defense. That may be a thought moving forward here with eight minutes to go. On makes. I'm 
Liberty Flames have won their last eight games. Bellarmine's won 10 in a row after an 0-2 start in the A-Sun. First year in the conference, first year in D1. Fleming inside. And a strong finish. And a little extracurricular activity that time from Chris Parker. And that may warrant another look as Richie McKay tumbles out onto the floor. Scott Davenport's out there as well. And what's been a relatively well-played game, all of that just changed in a hurry. They're locking arms at the end. Pushed by Spets Parker. Parker. Yeah. That's going to be an F1. John Dillon, Jason Deering will have a look at it at the scorer's table. Timeout on the floor. Flames lead it by 16. All Liberty with a 16 point lead. Paul Biancardi, Roy Philpot. CJ Fleming has the and one opportunity, but watch here with the circle. Chris Parker and Justin Betts get tangled up. There's a shove. So Fleming's going to get a free throw here. They're having another look at this over at the scorer's table, Paul, and you're thinking that's a flagrant one. No question about it. I think they're also looking at to see who came off the bench. Was there any other altercations? Were, were there any other intentional fouls caused? Take a look at one in the blue and one in the white. Battling a little bit. Betts takes a dive, but Parker shoved him with two hands, and that's going to get him a technical foul. You got coaches. I mean, Richie McKay yeah, all the way Dylan. down on the opposite end of the floor. Scott Davenport and the assistants come pouring out. Dylan Penn also kind of charged at one of the Liberty players. Didn't look like he did anything, but we don't know if he said anything. That was 13 in the white. Well, we know Fleming's going to have a chance to complete the and one. If it's flagrant one, more free throws should be awarded to Bellarmine. And the question is, will there be anything added on to that potential infraction? We're awaiting the official word just like everybody else. But, Paul, potentially a turning point if Bellarmine can capitalize, and we'll see what the final call is. Not just in points, Roy, but also in emotion. This could be a fire that Scott Davenport can light under his team right now. You saw the benches stand up. A couple of guys came out. The intensity, the chippiness is starting to come to fruition. So Bellerman has also been assessed. Infraction here. Chris Parker also called for the additional attraction. Apologies for the delay in the ruling here. We're waiting with that official word just as the scorer's table received it. Coach, I'm assuming one of these was for the and one chance. And, and he's shooting the technical. The yep. Yeah. So Parker and Fleming were both teed up. That was the ruling. Fleming's 87% for the season. That's why Scott Davenport left him at the line. He makes two out of three. So Parker's going to have a seat on the bench. Parker and Fleming picking up technical fouls in that sequence. Now Bellerman's going to maintain possession, so a chance. 
After the bucket, two free throws. Dylan Penn rejected by Robinson. And he finds the basketball. Liberty takes over. And that's a big time play for Liberty. You could feel the momentum shifting a little bit towards the Knights. Big time stop. Seven and a half minutes remaining. McGee continues the hot shooting. Darius McGee has been on fire since the opening tip. He's now knocking on the door of 30 points. There he is, the big 3-0, 8 of 10 from downtown. That's a new career high. He just breaks your back every time he puts the ball in the basket. He makes deep shots, he makes timely shots, he makes clutch shots. Fleming on the other end, chance for three more. So C.K. Fleming doing his best to try to keep Bellerman. He's the hang-around team. In the second half, the Knights have attacked the basket much more. Off the dribble, trying to get in ones like they are right now. Trying to get some post-ups, some hard and heavy drives. Their three-point shot is going in, but they want to stop the game, get to the line, set up some pressure. They have to change the tempo of this game. Fleming with nine. Coach, they haven't done it so far. Liberty just keeps knocking down shot after shot, particularly from long range. Flames with 15 threes in this one and just 22 attempts. Liberty did a nice job of just breaking pressure. And an offensive foul on Elijah Cuffey. That's going to be his third. Betts stepped right in. Oh, they called it on Betts. You're right. Got to take advantage now. Keep attacking the rim. And it doesn't happen here. The offensive foul. Well, first, Justin Betts. He takes the charge. Now it's Dobbs standing in the line of Claycomb. You can take a charge. I can take a charge. And Dylan Penn called for another quick foul. Bellerman already in the bonus. Liberty two fouls away. You're down 16. You, you've got to apply pressure on Liberty. Maybe they turn it over. Maybe you get a steal. Maybe they shoot quick. But if not, if you don't force them to do things, they're going to hold the basketball on you. There's the pressure on McGee. Tried the no-look baseball pass. It was picked off. Quickly ahead to C.J. Fleming. Knights have to hurry. Fleming launching. And the rebound by Robinson for Liberty. He's quickly double teamed, hit the deck. And a couple of calls for timeouts. So let's see, I believe the foul against Liberty here, Coach. And the Knights are playing with some serious urgency right now. They missed a three, attacked the glass. That's almost a triple team. Look at three guys. Trying to take the ball out of his hands. Loose ball. Pin right there to take a broken play and get to the line. Pin just won a fourth to stripe. He does have 15 points. Big one there. And we remind you, more basketball headed your way over on ESPN later this afternoon. In fact, just about 30 minutes, Illinois and Wisconsin in a top 25 showdown to the Big Ten. Later tonight, North Carolina on the bubble, currently a 10 C facing ACC leading Florida State. Knowles are ranked 11. That's coming up at 4 Eastern on ESPN, also on the ESPN app. Scott Davenport getting much more aggressive defensively, and it's starting to pay off. They're trying to speed up Liberty. They got a turnover last possession. They had another one there instead, the foul, Claycomb. And Richie McKay expects this pressure being up big late in the game. You notice Liberty taking less dribbles, more passes, and those passes are really short. And that looked clean. I thought so as well. Maybe you see a trap off a ball screen. 
You want to change the rhythm of Liberty right now. Foul called against Bellerman. Now Rowe tried to claim that offensive rebound. And he was shoved in the process. Jello Robinson downstairs as well. Well, these two programs at the very top of the A-Sun standings, both with a 10-2 mark in league. Winner of this one clinches the number one seed for the upcoming A-Sun tournament in Jacksonville. Bellerman playing his first year of Division I college basketball this season. Not eligible for the big dance. McGee tosses up an air ball. And Liberty's trying to win the conference the third straight year. Remember, Liberty was Division II at one time. And in the early 90s, they went Division I, went to the Big South, and transitioned to the A-Sun. Fleming had so that Richie, one rattle out. Yeah, Richie McKay understands being a Division II team is only a name. Well, we talked with him extensively this week, too, about Selection Sunday and how the committee whole system it feels like a lot of times is set up for the brand conferences power five or six if you will the little guys sometimes don't get recognized unless they run the table in those one bid leagues I think Liberty's starting to garner recognition you think back to their football program their win against Coastal Carolina in the Cure Bowl Hugh Freeze put that football program on the map this past year look at the dish inside Shiloh Robinson wide open Shot fake, set up the drive, and it made the layup. I hear the smile in your voice as a former coach with that kind of sequence. It was a thing of beauty. Uh, they don't panic. They don't let the defensive pressure change their approach. They attack the pressure with shot fakes. Fleming, nifty move inside. Yeah, Fleming's been really strong in the second half. Look at that. He's giving the ball to the official, saying, let's go. Let's put this in bounds. Camp week's almost here. Selection Sunday getting closer, just two weeks out. Under four to play. All these conference tournaments getting set to be tipped off after everything was shut down a year ago. Contact, no whistle. Shot clock at five for Darius McGee. Tough one. Chance to capitalize. Fleming, deep triple. Count it! 83 72. Still time for Bellerman playing at home. The way they score the ball, there's plenty of time. You see the way they're trying to speed up Liberty. Just to play a little faster, shoot a little quicker. Richard McKay wants a timeout. Yeah, he's seen enough. Timeout on the floor. Uh, Kyle Rowe getting it done. You mentioned the pump fake. Coaching 101 right here, Paul. Attack the closeout. Little look away. Liberty with the layup. Textbook. Michigan has separated itself. High level, almost final four feeling type of matchup. Now watching college game day this morning, virtually everybody was suggesting Michigan's going to win the NCAA tournament. The Illustrator says he likes Michigan right now to win it as opposed to the Zags and the Bears. And we'll see back here at Freedom Hall, Louisville, Kentucky. Paul Biancardi, Roy Philpott, 11-point advantage for Liberty. The Flames have not trailed. And Darius McGee has been one of the reasons why. Red hot from three-point range. Career high 30 points. His, uh, his efficiency is what's so impressive. You know he's going to shoot it. You know he's going to drive it. The ability to score the ball with productive numbers. The 5-9, a generous 5-9. So impressive. Bellerman, coach in the midst of a 10-2 run. 
Trying to cut it to single digits here. C.J. Fleming, the runner, and a chance for three. No, they're going to call an offensive foul. No buckets. How big of a call was that? That's huge. Fleming, it's been so aggressive. Takes it off the bounce hard. Little push off at the end. Good call by the official. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy, the official sponsor of Getting Stuff Done. All right, so I want to go back because two huge plays in this one. The technical foul was called there on Chris Parker with the shove. And then C.J. Fleming was also whistled for a technical because he yells in the direction of the official right there. And so he gets teed up as well. That results in two free throws for Liberty. And then the offensive foul against Parker. Now, that last one I think was a great call, Coach. You mentioned during the break the push off was clear. But those two plays, enormous. And, you know, as Bellman tries to come back here. C.J. Fleming has to know better than to say something to an official or to an opposing player. Second thing is assistant coaches have to grab the players so they don't walk towards people and get that type of call. As an assistant coach, you're responsible for the players. You're, you're not there to take care of anything else. When things break out, get the players off the court, get them away from the officials. Grab it, grab it. Potential five-point swing in those two sequences. One situation, Fleming's just trying to make a play, and I think Bradshaw stepped out of bounds. He has right foot stepped on the baseline, or it's a foul. Cuffey's going to be whistled for the foul here. He was close to the end line. Bradshaw, Bradshaw is the team, yeah, team leader in so many categories, Roy. Just makes his presence today. felt. Coming up later tonight, to the association we go. Hottest team in the league. Brooklyn Nets, James Harden so efficient since the trade. Luka Doncic in town, 8.30 tip. That's Eastern time over on ABC. Saturday primetime matchup presented by AT&T 5G. And don't look now, but Bellman. Pedro Bradshaw with 20 points now. Cut the lead, single digits for the first time since it was 40 to 31, and there's a turnover. Knights are going to get it right back. If you're Liberty, you know you're going to feel pressure. You know you're going to get denied the basketball. You may get bumped a little bit. You've got to play through it, not in a physical way, but in a mental way, where you embrace it and then respond to it. You may have to cut a little bit harder. You may have to cut multiple times to get open. First meeting between these two programs. It could be the first of two with the A-Sun tournament coming up. And McGee going to be called for the foul as Fleming hit the deck. And free throws coming for C.J. Fleming, the senior from Cincinnati. Paul, you mentioned it earlier, 87% at the line this season. Yeah, I thought that was a light tap on McGee with the body. I think Fleming creates a lot of contact, and he puts the official in a position where they have to make a call. Got an unusual routine at the foul line. He brings that ball way down low to get it up high. Knights have won their last 10 A Sun games. Bellarmine Knights, Liberty's won their last eight, both at 10 and 2. Winner this one clinches the number one seed of the A Sun tournament. Fleming with 16, and the lead dwindles to seven. It was 20 just seven minutes ago. If you're Liberty, you want to make short passes. Be prepared for double teams. Use your timeouts. You have two left. Parker, the runner, clutch. You want to know why I get excited about a shot fake, Roy? That created the basket. Tough shot by Fleming, tapped out by Penn, and a fresh 20. Knights have to hurry. That's the spin off last. Back to a seven point game, buck 28 remaining, and a timeout will be called by the Knights. 
If you're Scott Davenport, you're trying to, to deny the inbound. Switch everything. Put pressure on the ball. If you don't get the steal, get a trap. But if you trap, Roy, then you have to rotate players up ahead. You have to gamble. You have to keep one player long. But four guys should be up trapping and rotating, trying to get that steal. You got one guy deep to protect the rim. And you're looking for back taps. You're looking for anything to cause chaos right now. Now the last four minutes of this one have felt chaotic in every sense of the word. As Bellerman tries to scratch and claw its way back into this one after trailing by as many as 20 points. And you see defensively, of course, 13 turnovers this afternoon, leading the A-Sun in that department. And that's an impressive number because they don't full court press. They don't trap a lot. It's mostly the half court defense they get. McGee. And a chance for three. What a big bucket for Mr. Clutch himself. Darius McGee. 32 points today, a new career high. And the most by a Liberty player in the last 11 seasons. Well, the Knights did almost everything right. Liberty got to throw out, and when they did, they had a two-on-one. Take a look at the favorite for the player of the year in the Atlantic Sun, Darius McGee. You have to wonder if today just really clinched it for him. Bradshaw deep triple. Cuffey controls the rebound, and he's quickly fouled, and the Flames are in position now. Well, Elijah Cuffey goes to the stripe. He's had a productive day this afternoon. The senior out of West Virginia. He's had an emotional last 10 months. Lost his brother, Jason, a firefighter in the Charleston, West Virginia area while he was on duty. Died at the age of 27. That is brother's number 10. It's also worn by his sister, Myra, who has a scholarship offer to Marshall. Thinks about him every time he plays. He has a tattoo on his right leg of 10, 10, and 10. An emotional tribute was posted on the Liberty official Twitter account. Elijah chronicling his love for his family, for his late brother, Jason. I encourage you to check that out. They're going to take a look at that last play. Fleming involved again. Fleming goes hard. McGee with him. Clean strip. That's a really clean strip by Liberty. I don't see anything. No. Possession of the ball, that's what they're looking at. Well, you mentioned Fleming. He's been involved in a number of plays. Some emotional plays today. You go back and you read from his time at LaSalle High School and just talked about how he would will his team to wins back in the day. That emotion. He and plays with great passion. passion. Yeah. Yes. No. He has that never say die attitude. Except for the technical foul, he's played a terrific game. He'll learn from it. 16 points today for C.J. Fleming. We've been told he'll be back next year as well. Despite the fact it's his senior season, of course. Foul call. And you mentioned Shiloh Robinson. He grabbed another rebound. That's his seventh in double figures as well. He's been pretty significant force today for Liberty in this one, Coach. Liberty's had five guys in double figures. Robinson came off the bench in this game. Ten points. Chance for two more. Seven boards, two blocks. Six, seven sophomore. Now coming up, Duke and Louisville. 
Blue Devils have won four in a row, 12 and five cards. Travel to Cameron Indoor, that's at six. Then off to the Big 12 later tonight, eight o'clock Eastern, number two Baylor. 17th ranked Kansas, eight Eastern. On ESPN, also on the ESPN app. McGee, the run out. Yes, sir! The 48 inch vertical on display. Darius McGee, a game for the ages. McGee has been fantastic. He's outside shooting. He was on a different planet this afternoon. He's finishing this off. He wants to put a ring on it. 34 points on only 18 shots. The difference maker for the Flames who are flexing in Louisville. Three years in a row, Roy. Liberty has won the A-Sun, and they've won it on the road. Mental toughness, togetherness, and Richie McKay was just bragging about his guys as people. How much they've sacrificed this year, like all college players have, but how much they've stayed together and how much they've worked together. Another rebound for Robinson. That's going to just about do it. Shot clock is off. And the celebration beginning in Lynchburg, Virginia. Yet again, the A-Sun regular season champions. The Liberty Flames, they will be the one seed. Tournament starting on Thursday. And the 20th win of the season. A wire-to-wire -wire finish for the Liberty Flames. 94-78, the final score. Darius McGee, a career-high 34 points. And he is all smiles on the road, Coach. Even when he's not scoring, he's helping Liberty win. But despite losing the A-Sun Player of the Year last year and Caleb Holmesley, Richie McKay has done it again. Regular season champs in the A-Sun. You wonder if this will be the first of two meetings between these two teams. The A-Sun Tournament coming up next week. Back to wrap it up in Louisville after this quick break. Flames, the big winners. Well, congratulations are in order. The A-Sun regular season champion, Liberty Flames, get it done on the road for the third straight year. 94-78, our final score back inside Freedom Hall as Flames in their first ever meeting here in the regular season finale of the A-Sun. The head coach of Liberty, Richie McKay, joins us right now. Uh, coach, just two words for you, and I'll let you wax poetic. <laughs> Darius McGee. <laughs> yeah, Roy, in the... Uh... In the lead up to this, in our in our talk yesterday, you you had mentioned uh, or alluded to him, you and Coach Bincardi, that uh, he's someone that not a whole lot of people know about, but uh, he's he's really a special player and can do this at any level. I, I, the kid's got a magnificent uh, game, but he's even a better person. So we, we're fortunate he plays for for our team and represents our university because he's really special. Richie, you've won the A Sun last three years in a row and you've clinched on the road. Speak to the culture and the mental toughness of your program. Yeah, well, you guys know, you saw in the game, Bellarmine, they are, they run their offense with a pace that I haven't seen uh, in 31 years. Maybe maybe Davidson when we played him at UVA, and I hope Coach Bennett, Tony Bennett, and, and Coach Dick Bennett weren't watching because we gave up 78 points, but they're really hard to guard. But, but I do think our guys did a good job of taking what uh, what was available to them. And, you know, we've we've played in some big games, so it, it was great. It was nice to have the fans and have an atmosphere. But our guys aren't usually, they usually have a pretty good disposition about their approach. Uh, I thought we responded rightly today. Uh, even when they kept making runs, we, we did what we needed to do. And uh, I, I just think it speaks to the character of our group. Uh, Coach, you know, man, when you have guys that are, that are fully invested and uh, want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. It, it obviously, uh, we get the privilege of coaching young men like that. 
Well, Richie, you told us yesterday Darius McGee has range perhaps similar to that of his vertical jump, which is 48 inches. You suggested perhaps 48 feet. Uh, 34 points a day, a new career high, the most by a Liberty player in 12 years. But he was so efficient, 8 of 11 from deep. When did you know he was in the zone? Uh, we've seen that a lot over the course of his three years, Roy. So uh, I'm not sure he ever is out of the zone. He just... We encourage him to keep shooting because, uh, you know, in practice or when he's in his individual work, his pro time, uh, he's really a, an efficient, efficient, not just shooter, but scorer. So he can go by you and he can create for his teammate. Uh, but it was, it was fun to watch because he, uh, he, you could just kind of tell. And then he shot that air ball. And uh, so I'm going to get on him about that. Trust me. Richie Elijah Cuffey, senior. He's been through some personal tragedy. What does he mean to this team? Yeah, we wouldn't be here without him. He, he's he's literally one of the one of the un, most unbelievable young men that I've ever coached. His toughness, his commitment, um, and his perseverance. You know, one of the things that was really special in our group uh, when his brother passed away and had a home going to heaven. He, uh, our, our team drove up to West Virginia on a bus, and uh, and he saw all 16 of his brothers. Uh, standing by him and I'm so happy for him he uh, he's he's really meant the world to us coach congratulations on the victory we look forward to seeing you in the a Sun tournament thank you guys Richie McKay getting it done in the a Sun as Liberty now claims the regular season title the Flames in the regular campaign at 11 and 2 as Bellman falls to 10 and 3 could, be, could the Flames be dancing yet again? They have to win the tournament to punch their tickets. What a day it was at Freedom Hall for Paul Biancardi. I'm Roy Philpott saying so long from Louisville, Kentucky. Congrats in order for the Liberty Flames once again.